today known as Edo or Benin City was originally known as Idu. It started out with one man who shared the human race. His family initially grew into groups of small farm settlements linked with footpaths. Over time, the settlement grew bigger, turning into villages and towns hundreds and perhaps thousands of years later. The first inter-community council they set up was called Ike Dionwere, and it brought together the Dionwere's of all the different communities, towns and villages of Idu people, who recognized themselves as coming from the one original part Idu ancestry and speaking the same Idu language. They were related to one another as brothers, sisters, cousins, nephews, nieces, uncles, aunties, who happens to have set up settlements near or far from one another. The Akejian were members selected one from their members, usually the oldest in age, to lead them. Often he was very old, so he nominated a much younger member of the council as his Okaniko, a helping hand. This was how what became known as the Edo Kingdom evolved. It was by no means a perfect arrangement from day one, but it worked for hundreds and perhaps thousands of years, solving some problems, creating others, with occasional damaging fights for supremacy among the council members. Okiso Ikodo, 40 BCE. To 16 CE. An ambitious young smart Odiowere from Iduwu Ivyoto district emerged as the Okaniko. Ogiso staged a coup by abolishing the Oka Odiowere and declaring himself the Ogiso. He set up the Odibo Ogiso group to help him consolidate his authority. Ogiso means ruler from the sky. By calling himself Ogiso, he was implying direct lineage to Pa Idu, the youngest son of Osaloboa from the sky. He named his combined territories as Prony Nation State, Igodomigodo, and set up his capital at Ugbeku. The people of Igodomigodo enthusiastically accepted him as their ruler. They saw him as the reincarnation of Pa Idu and accorded him with divine qualities. They transferred to him all the myths associated with Pa Idu, including the God creation myth. All Ogisos and Obas of Benin naturally tried to strengthen this myth in a variety of ways, including not allowing themselves to be seen eating in public and so suggesting that they can live without food. They are myths, not mortals, but God kings, with celestial mystic attached to them. In 16 CE, Ogiso Igodo joined his ancestors. Ogiso Oriagba, 685 to 712 CE, ascended the throne of his father, Ogiso Edia, under the primogenial system, and was determined to introduce stability to the succession process. He was not happy with the gerontocratic system that tended to produce very old Ogisos, counting their days to the grave.
he felt that his son taking over from his father's system would bring young blood to the throne. So he conversed seriously for the process and backed it with the upper's nest of king taking over in a situation where the upper left no son. He evoked the spirit of Eividu and the ancestors of the land to support his efforts and positively influence members of the royal council. The royal council, later known as the Seven Uzama, and which included Chief Ulia, Idoe, Hero, Izomo, and Eonire, after long deliberations, adopted its system of primogeniture and swore on the shrine of Eiwidu to uphold it at all times, both for the monarch and themselves. The rule was extended to their properties, duties, and debt when they die. Ogiso Obioye, 967 to 1012 CE. He was a resourceful king. He introduced the use of cowrie as currency to Igudumigudu. His reign witnessed fire heartbreak, severe inflation, food scarcity, and immigration. Hogiso Harihu, 1012 to 1059 CE. He was a great merchant. He introduced the double payment system a bank and a slave labor culture to Igodomigodo. Ogiso Owodo, 1059 to 1100 CE. He was the 31st and last Ogiso of Igodomigodo. He was considered a weak king because he could not undo Osoga, who was a thorn in his flesh during his reign. Crown Prince Ekaladera, the banished son of the last Ogiso of Wodo, later known as Odudua. After the banishment of Owodo, the last Ogiso under the Ogiso period, for Misro, Havian, who had earlier distinguished himself as a brave man by destroying the man-eating Osogan, was appointed as an administrator who ruled Benin for nearly 40 years. At his old age, Havian nominated his son, Ogiamir, as his successor. Unfortunately, this nomination did not go well with the Edo people who maintained that succession to the throne is always applicable to the kings and not commoners to which class Avian belonged. Spearheaded by Olia, there was a serious agitation to bring back the monarch. The nation was thrown into internecine war and as a way out, the elders led by Olia went on a search party to look for a caladera the banished son of the last Ogiso Owodo, who had for some time taken refuge at Uwe or Ife as is now known. The search party reached Uwe to meet a Kaladera already enjoying the status of a king. The Edo people could not persuade him to return home. Nevertheless, he, a Kaladera, now known as Odudua, agreed to send his son if only the Edo people could take care of him. This is how Odudua sent his son Oromion to Benin to test whether the Edo people would care for their king. Odudua gave the Edo people three years to nurse the common laws. On their sources, the great Odudua was convinced that the people really would care for their king. Oromion was therefore sent to Benin in 1117 AD, he came into Benin amazed. 